I'm going to talk about location decision models. And to be more specific, I am talking about factor ranking method for location analysis. Please note that a factor ranking method can be implemented for different types of decisions. Here we exercise it for location analysis or international location analysis. It is some sort of objective subjective method while we use our judgments, we try to quantify that judgment. When we want to decide about location of a manufacturing plant or a service center or a warehouse, we consider different factors. For example, location of market, location of raw material or location of inputs, transportation infrastructure, modes of transportation and intermodal capabilities to switch from truck to rail to water and their corresponding cost, availability of energy and its costs, availability of skilled labor and its cost, land, building and construction costs, cultural considerations regarding a foreign country or even a different state, weather, living conditions and standards, regulation, taxes and tariffs. So we define a set of factors which we believe they have impact on our decisions. While selecting a factor equation in a foreign country, considerations should be given culture, legal system, monetary policies, transportation infrastructure, or all of the above, all of the answers. Multinational organization can shop from country to country and cut cost through lower wages, lower indirect labor costs, less stringent regulations, lower taxes and tariffs, all of the answers. But let's go to a technique called factor rating method. Here, for example, we have one, two, three, four candidate locations. And we have defined some factors, transportation costs, operating costs, construction costs, business environment. And then we subjectively I mean, a combination of subjective and objective analysis, qualitative and quantitative analysis, we have come out with some weights for each of these factors. And as we have learned in this course, summation of weights should be always equal to one. And then we have come and we have looked at each of these candidate locations with respect to each of these factors and we have given them a score for example in this case between 0 and 100 and all of them all factors are scored between 0 and 100 all the way 0 and 100 and then because summation of weights are also equal to 1 here we come out with something between zero and 100, exactly the same as what we did for weighted moving average with for weighted average, multiply score by its weight, 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 and add them up. This is for the first one, second, third, fourth, and out of 68, 62, 60 and 62, the best location would be here.
Now let's look at this example. Here we also have a couple of countries, one, two, three, and four, and we have assigned some weights. But we have not been careful to make it equal to one. For example, we have sat down and given something between one and 10 to each of these factors, transportation cost, availability and cost of skilled labor, investment cost, cultural consideration, and so on and so forth. So we have considered six factors. As usual, if we go here, we can right click and we can say open. That Excel sheet opens. Now let's see what I have done here. We have these factors. We add them up, alt equal. Alt equal is something that you can use in place of sum. It will bring up some function for you because sum is a function that is frequently used. So if you click, if you push alt and hit equal, summation comes up. Now these are the weights we have. We know that we can easily turn them all into normalized form such that the summation of all of them is equal to one. I go here, divided by summation, and I lock it, enter, and I copy it down. If I didn't like to have this one over there, I could have come here equal to this one, divided by summation of all of them, and then lock it, enter, and then copy it down. So I have these numbers and these numbers are random for you to experiment different things. But if you don't like it, you can just copy it, paste it by value and then examine. And these numbers also I have entered the random numbers all my scores for country one, and then I can simply go here and type equal to sum product of these weights and lock it multiplied by these scores, and that will give me the average for the first place, and I can copy it to the right and have the numbers for all four places. And in this situation, country one has the best score because I have created random numbers. Now country two, country four, country three, country two, country four, country two, because those are random numbers. Each of these columns are some product of the weights multiplied by the score. And I have come here, let me clear the format. What I did, I said, or to minimum of these four numbers, enter. And then I came here and I went to Conditional formatting, conditional formatting, new rule, use formula. And then I stated that if this one, and then I go and, so it's dollar D, dollar 10, I remove dollar from D, I remove the dollar sign from D. So I have D dollar 10, if that is equal to this, minimum which is here, then format it, for example, fill it green color. Okay, okay, 
then I come here and I format paint it and extend it to everywhere. I made a mistake here instead of max I typed mean so I'll go ahead and I type max and now it identifies for me the country which is the best and also paint it for me just to show you how to use that conditional format so we learned factor ranking method let me go to something else look at this problem and let's solve it read it please and let's solve it we can produce a product in Houston for $6 per shirt. We need to send them to Chicago and the demand is 100,000 shirts per year. Transportation and the storage cost at Houston is Five dollars per hundred pounds and each packed shirt weighs one pound for hundred shirts we need to pay five dollars for transportation costs and therefore for one shirt it is 0.05 if we are doing it in Houston and production cost is six per shirt therefore the total cost is six point or five if we select Houston but we can go overseas and instead of spending six dollars we can spend four dollars our production cost comes down from six to four but we need to ship some raw material from Houston to overseas which cost ten dollars per hundred pounds or ten dollars per hundred shirts ten dollars per hundred shirt that would be point one and then when they are completed i send them from overseas to chicago and that cost sixteen dollars per hundred and that is point sixteen per one so that is point one plus point sixteen plus four dollars production cost therefore that is four point twenty six and then i also have fifty cents per shirt import duty cost so that is point five the summation is four point seven six four point seven six compared to 6.05 and because we are talking about 100,000 shirts I should remove the decimal point and put three zeros in front of each and therefore this solution is the correct solution so we had six dollars plus 0.05 for Houston which made it 6.05 and if for 100,000 that is 6.05000 and for overseas that is 4 plus 0.1 which was transportation from Houston to there and 0.16 transportation back to Chicago and 0.5 duties and that is equal to 4 point seventy six and if it's for one hundred thousand that would be four seventy six zero and zero 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 but don't forget when you go to a foreign country if the production cost is cheaper at the same time you lose many other things you lose the opportunity of creating job in your own country you lose the opportunity of retaining the know-how of producing that product and you somehow lose the linkage between 
different components of your production system. So we need to consider all of these. We should compare total cost of ownership with total cost of losing all uh, capabilities and passing to a third party. There is a trade-off always. We need to make sure to do a comprehensive, quantitative-based analysis. And whenever we cannot do it very quantitative, we need to combine qualitative and quantitative. But at the same time, we need to try to make qualitative issues as much as possible quantitative. Count what is countable, measure what is measurable, what is not measurable, make it measurable. Thank you for attending this session.